Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode, I think we should aim for Duna because the Duna transfer window is coming up. Uh, the transfer window occurs when Kerbin is 45 degrees behind Duna. It's, it's a little bit more than 45 degrees right now, but it's close enough that we should take a look at it. And checking our available contracts, uh, we see that we have an Explore Duna contract here, flyby, and return to Kerbin from a flyby of Duna, but it doesn't necessitate the use of a Kerbal. So I think that's a good one to pick up um, and it doesn't give us a deadline. Also position a satellite in a specific orbit of Duna. So it needs a thermometer, antenna obviously, but that's going to be a given anyway, and can generate power. That's a pretty high orbit around Duna, gotta say. Um, but so the plan would be to send a probe to Duna, get into orbit, uh, this orbit, and then come back. Um, that, that might be tricky, but you know, we might as well give it a go. Uh, we'll get some of it done anyway. And of course we need better antennae. So we've got some science thanks to our Minmus missions. And I think we should invest in um, this technology, precision engineering. I, I wish it had a few other things. Cubic octagonal struts are good for certain situations, but um, mainly we're trying to get this antenna. Um, relay we don't need right now, uh, just a direct line back would be good enough. So I'll, I'll pick it up, but there's a lot of other stuff we could really use, but um, I'm focused on Duna and we'll take that. Okay, our scientists just made a breakthrough. We now have access to waste incinerator, waste compressor in the chemical plant. Okay, uh, so that's additional stuff. Um, here we see the waste processor there, uh, but uh, the chemical plant, where was that? Uh, there it is. And so we now have those. I, uh, the auto location thing is supposed to indicate which technology uh, it gets unlocked by, people said. But I don't know why it's not popping up. That should be automatic. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, what else? Oh yes, I noticed this gravity ring. I want one of those. That seems fancy. That's added by Kerbalism. Um, and this greenhouse also added by Kerbalism. So we've got some interesting parts that are available in this particular technology uh, for really large things. So that's coming up. Add tranquilizing vortex to big enough crew parts. That sounds dangerous to be honest, but okay. Anyway, it is time for me to build my Duna probe. Okay, I started building my probe, but I decided that it was high time that we got a fairing. Uh, so we can unlock that with advanced construction and we have the science, so let's just proceed with that. And so we're not gonna have quite the aerodynamic disaster that we otherwise would have. I'm, the probe I'm making was pretty streamlined, but still, this will be better. Okay, so here we have Duna Probe 1 on the Vega rocket, named Vega because it sort of looked to me like a Vega rocket, either that or an early Ariane rocket, um, and so I just went with Vega for some reason. Uh, but yep, uh, four of the swivel engines at the bottom, no uh, Reliant engine at the center this time, because uh, we have enough thrust. We probably should have the launch clamps there. Uh, it's the vacuum stats that you see here. At sea level, it's got a modest 1.25 thrust weight ratio. And uh, so we're planning to make orbit on the Terrier stage here. The Terrier will get us uh, on our Duna transfer. And then the rest of the business, uh, this stage here, um, the Spark engine will capture us into orbit around Duna. It might not even be necessary, maybe the Terrier will still be able to do that. But just in case, uh, it'll capture us into orbit, get us into the required orbit uh, for the contract, which is very peculiar. Maybe fly by Ike or something. Uh, we could do a few different sciences. And then uh, send us on a trajectory back home. Or the ant engines at the top here, you see uh, two here. Try not to clip the nozzles into anything, but it's pretty close. Anyway, we've got two goo containers, thermometer, um, Geiger counter, 
and uh, the rest of it is there's the hex and some fuel and solar panels and power and of course the two antennae so yep now uh, we've got full ablator on the heat shield for now for more data and uh, yep yeah, hopefully that'll take care of both contracts it costs a bit but we're getting paid a lot so probably worth it it's well, definitely overkill but anyway it's a good looking rocket so that's that that makes up for the extra pricing all right save and uh, well we don't have to launch just yet let's go to the tracking station and take a look at when it's actually at 45 degrees I don't have curve alarm clock you'll notice I'll just eyeball it for the first few times um, all right that looks to me like about 45 degrees maybe a little bit closer but that should be all right Minmus Pro batteries okay I, I don't want to know about that so many things I don't want to know about we have to remember to like disable all the things. Maybe we should just bring all the probes back from now on so I don't have to constantly disable stuff. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle is up. Let's bring that up. We don't have to worry about any kerbals this time. And launch. So I do have MechJeb now, and I put in the configuration that adds it to all command modules so that I don't have to add the silly part to everything. Yeah, it's definitely nicer using Smart ASS, I'll tell you. This stage is pretty close to being a single stage to orbit stage, but we do want it to deorbit, so. Okay, Terrier. And fairing. Ah, I should probably have a clamshell fairing. Okay, that's fine. Alright, we are in orbit. We are recharging. Let's get the antennae out before I forget. And right around here, we burn out. Costs about a thousand. So probably like that. Going in line, roughly speaking. So let's tilt there. Uh, actually, a little bit earlier. Well, this is something that MacJeb can help with as far as using the maneuver node editor, so I don't have to pull that thing all the time. Um, so we want to shift the timing of it as a real burn. You can see how that affects it. And there we go. We have a closest approach distance inside Tuna SOI. You can see the target orbit there is way above, and that's why I have to pack the extra fuel, because I'm going to capture low. This is like high, really, really high. Uh, we should probably just go with this for now. That seems pretty touchy. Cloudman's debris when you just happen to be passing by it. Okay, burn. Well, at this point, we'll adjust at a mid-course adjustment point. Actually, we're basically at the descending node now. So maybe it's okay to do it now. I think it's probably the other one, not this one. Now we could have used um, atmospheric capture to capture around Duna, but I'm, I'm just gonna go with propulsive capture so that's more predictable at this point. Of course there's less sun at Duna, but I think we'll be alright. I slapped on an overabundance of solar panels. Okay, at our mid-course adjustment point, Communication is 97%, so wonderful. And electric charge is good. We'll reorient to make sure it stays good after we do the burn. Actually, I think uh, the burn orientation will be fine. It occurs to me we should do some science out here. That'll be good enough. 56 kilometers. I think that's still outside Duna's atmosphere, if I remember correctly. So, yep. And science, not the goo containers this time. We'll save that for Duna and Ike. 
uh, 11.2 high over the sun. Coronal mass inject ejection hit the Kerbin system. Well, good thing we don't have any Kerbals hanging out. Signal strength is getting stretched actually. We're below 50%. Uh, what? There's been a pro problem with a solar panel. We were able to fix it remotely, but is there a problem with a communication device? Well, there was a problem with the data transmitter, but they said they were able to fix it remotely. But I thought that we'd have enough signal strength to reach Duna with these antennae, but it doesn't seem that way. They're 2 million kilometers, but it depends on our tracking station situation. There's nothing much I can do about it. Stop telling me about the bat. Oh, it's Kajina 1. Yeah, we still got to do that. Oh, well, maybe there's a way of salvaging this situation. Okay, I'll think about what to do about this mission after we make an attempt to finish building that orbital station. Let's see what the situation around Kajina 1 is right now and while I was throwing, while why it was throwing up the warnings, I mean it's got electric charge. Okay, so let's aim to fulfill this contract. So let's send a pilot over here to dock with it. Okay, so here is our Mooner Rendezvous vessel. In order to create our moon station, sort of moon station, really just a docking target. But anyway. Uh, so, of course, we have to have the docking port at the top. Well, we could have it at the bottom, but then we'd have to move the engine somewhere, so it's a little bit complicated. So I had to use the radio parachutes here. I put extra solar panels on the baguettes. We've got oxygen tanks down here this time, so that they don't interfere with the parachutes. Otherwise, the rocket is another Vega, which uh, we had just seen. And I think we are good to go. Uh, whoop, not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to crew. And Valentina needs another point. I don't know if she's going to get more experience from docking or not. But we might as well give it a go. Now, we don't have any RCS. So this is going to have to be docking without RCS. But that should be doable. Alright, let us launch. There's plenty of margin on this. And we now have Smart ASS to help us out too. Um, I we're we're just gonna be keeping Valentine in the pod, so I don't see any need for mod propellant throttle up. SAS is on, and uh, altogether I think it's like 30 days of food, water, and oxygen, so that should be fine. Ignition and launch. Capsule is a bit tall. I added a battery underneath the docking port. Obviously, the exposed docking port is a flat surface to the airstream, but then again, so was the nose cap of Gemini, so maybe it's not too bad. No, oh, it uh, removed my windows again, darn it. I wonder if I should add stage recovery. That would change the shape of things just a little bit, because of course we wouldn't want to take this all the way up to nearly orbit. If we had stage recovery, there's a chance we could slap some parachutes on it and recover it that way. Okay, separation and terrier. Okay, nice tight orbit. And we have loads of Delta V to take care of this. I didn't want uh, to take any chances. Um, well, it looks like we can just uh, hit over at the ascending node there. Okay. Um... Should be good enough. Ignition. Okay, well that's right on as far as how much of a burn we did, but we went a little bit too far it looks like. And there's four degrees of inclination there. We could probably solve that during the orbital burn. Okay, so if we do this burn to get into orbit around the moon, Right around there, we'll have a separation of 1.7 kilometers, and really the inclination doesn't particularly matter. Uh, that's what we want. It'll be in daylight. It will not be in communication with Kerbin. Well, it might be close, but 
probably we'll have to station keep until we get over on this side because we do want to make sure i don't know how the communication with the agena is going to work kajina um we might have to wait to get over on this side to make sure that we have control over the kajina otherwise it's got to be rather difficult to dock not impossible but difficult no oh, electric charge Mm. The moon is eclipsing, really? Is that what's happening? Yep. Yeah. Moon is eclipsing the sun. Well, that's not handy. Well, are we going to find out how long the Kerbals can last without power? Well, I guess I was warned about this as far as fuel cells and the uh, use thereof is concerned. Uh, come on. Come on, that looks like enough sun for solar input. Come on. Okay, we're recharging. Whew. The crew is loud music again. That was a close one. That was a close one. It's worth remembering how often things eclipse other things in the Kerbin system. Okay, we have captured. We also have this rendezvous planner from MechJeb. I'm not going to use any of its automated functions, but I like the data. In fact, I should customize the rendezvous window. Okay, separation at closest approach 329 meters. Let's make a rendezvous window, shall we? Okay, matching velocities. I don't really want the terrier stage long, but it's just going to make docking a little bit more cumbersome, but it'll probably be all right. Let's see if we have control over the Kajina. It seems that way. So we can proceed now. Okay, the Kajina has been commanded to point at the target, and we'll just have it hold steady there. Oop, too much. I, if we're going to use the Terrier, I'm going to have to tone it down a bit. Even 5%. I'm quietly leaving open the possibility of also doing a landing on the surface. That's why we're having the Terrier still do all this. Okay, this is pointed at the target. Let's have the target reacquire us. It doesn't look quite spot on, but it should be within the tolerances. Let's see, within docking port magnetism. Yes, yes, we have magnetism. All right. And we just need to maintain stability for 10 seconds. And done. All right. They call this a station. That's good enough for now. We'll uh, consider doing better later. Uh, for now, we have docked with our little Kajina. And we're not going to use the Kajina to adjust our orbit as Gemini had. Uh, for now, let's just decouple. I don't think there's anything for us to do here, really. Right, we are moving away. Now, do I want to make a landing? I think so. I think there's no good reason why we shouldn't. Mm, where is our previous flag? Yeah, we landed in this crater. I do want to land in daylight, perhaps just somewhere out here where it's just Midlands or something. Uh, that was... Uh, oh, I didn't put the biome name, darn it. But it's definitely a crater, so. We could aim for this crater here, but it's a bit shadowed. Still, that's uh, that's probably a good option. This is Val's second trip to the moon. Should give somebody else a chance next time. Then again, uh, Philippe already did Minmus, so. 
Maybe if we can land around here somewhere, it'd be good. Okay. Come on. Okay. We're on basically a vertical descent now. I don't suppose we've... Yeah, we can't do a crew report. Okay. I took off some of the scientific instruments, though. So, in fact, I took off the little ladder rungs. So, Valentina's gonna have to use a jetpack, or use the climb function if it happens to work. It's quite a dramatic landscape. Okay, we have plopped down a little bit of a skid, but not a big problem. All right, crew report now. We certainly haven't done that. Keep and EVA. Uh, EVA report. Keep and surface sample. Interesting place to take the surface sample from, but keep and board. So we get the contingency sample. All right, but we do want to plant that flag. As much as it's an additional risk that doesn't come with much reward. And Val's chattering. Okay. Plant flag. Oh, I forgot we don't have any Marpa Pellon. She is going to have to climb up. Val at the East Crater. I hope I can climb back in. Yeah, you and me both. Well, I mean, she could probably hop. Hopping is an option. Whoa, whoa, maybe not. Uh, hopping is a little bit too vigorous. Oh. Uh, grab. And board. Jeez. Yeah, I'm just not used to climbing and everything. All right, SAS on. And anything we forgot? Well, there wasn't any other signs. Like I said, I took it all off. So, off we go. Okay, that should be safely in orbit. We have 738 meters per second left to get back home, which should be more than enough. Let's just make sure that the sun doesn't block our way on the way back. Um, well, we will be ejecting from here, so uh, on the ejection path out, we should be in daylight the whole way without the moon blocking our way. Okay, trans -curbin injection. Well, it's a pretty robust little system we've got here. We can rendezvous with a station and land on the moon and come back up again and still have plenty of Delta V left over. But it's only with one Kerbal. Can we just sort of scale it up? We'll see. That sort of depends on the, on the baguettes, doesn't it? We don't really have multiple scale baguettes. Okay, well, uh, just as a precaution, I'm going to pump up the oxygen. No reason why we shouldn't top that off. All right, time to dump the service module. And uh, not activate the parachutes just yet. I guess I probably shouldn't use Smart ESS for this. Let's just have Val uh, hold retrograde surface. I learned my lesson Definitely not retrograde orbit. That's not good. All right, we've got sunlight over there, though we'll have to reorient to make sure our solar panel catches it. Not that we need to. I think the electric charge in the battery will hold out until we recover this. Interesting. I would think that we would be recharging by now. Hmm. Okay, parachute. Don't suppose it's a new crew report. It is. Flying over the highlands is new. Okay, we've plopped down. And how about on the surface? Yes. And EVA. EVA report. 
Yes, surface sample, definitely. And board. All right, all done. 96 science earned. Danger, no more oxygen on Moon or Rendezvous. Uh, it's so confused sometimes. It really is. Um, no XP gain for Valentina despite the docking, unfortunately. You'd think docking would give some experience, but apparently not. Uh, let's see what we can do about that Duna probe and maybe salvage it. Otherwise, we'll have to... I mean, I don't even know if putting twice as many antennae will be enough. We might have to wait for even better antenna. Or upgrade the tracking station. How much would that cost? Uh, we're at level 2. Upgrade will uh, get to level 3. Give us unknown object tracking. Let me see. R&D. Well, we can't upgrade R&D, but then again, our research uh, limit is already at 500. Um, I don't care about more than 255 parts just yet. Max vessel weight of 140 tons is probably okay for now. But we should upgrade that too. I think we can do both. We can do both. Anything else we need to upgrade? Uh, there's still a lot to upgrade, but this seems most pressing. I'll wait even on the launch pad. I don't think that's the most urgent thing. So, will that upgrade be enough to maintain communication with the probe? We put a lot of extra fuel, so maybe it can find a new encounter with Duna. Let's see. Okay, I remember somebody in the comments talking about a cycler orbit, and in a way, that's what we've got, because right now we're very close to Duna here, obviously, and we're making a maneuver to increase our orbit size so that we basically have the same orbital period as Duna, as you can see, except in this case, we don't have curb in that uh, one end of that. Um, so, yeah, but this is an encounter that will occur after a Duna year, which is, I guess, basically two years Kerbin, and I, I'm willing to wait, wait that out. So we're going to do this node in 13 days to boost our orbit and get this encountered. The question is, I mean, it seems like right now we are beyond Duna orbit and we have communication now, and it's uh, signal strength 43% when Kerbin is over there. Now, when Kerbin is over here, we're probably not going to have contact. But the question is, where is Kerbin going to end up after we go around the cycle? It's probably, because we're talking about it's a little less than two Kerbin years, right? It says one year and 369 days. Uh, so it's going to go around one year. And then it's not quite going to get back to this location, which means it may be fairly close. I'm hoping that anyway. So let's do this maneuver and find out. Okay, there's our orbit coming in. Oop. I wanted to make sure we're on this side. So otherwise, we're going to have to reverse direction to get into the target orbit, right? Um, let's pull it in just a little bit. All right, that's good enough. Okay, we have an encounter. Okay, things are shaping up as expected. We're going to have a very close communication range here. Oh, uh, solar panel malfunctioned on the probe, but we can still repair it. But there are a lot of solar panels. All we would have to do is rotate to ensure electric charge. Okay, we are in the Duna system with communications this time. And let us go radial in to get a little bit closer to Duna so that we can, for the science purposes, not because we want to get into that orbit permanently or anything. Okay, that'll do the trick. And how about some inclination as well? Okay, that's pretty flat. So what we're going to want to do is get into orbit like that. And I guess we'll pass on Ike for now. And then we'll have to make some adjustments. But that should be good. 
I guess let's see how much it takes to make this orbit. Just another 125. I saw a potential Ike encounter. I guess we could swing by. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know if I want the resulting orbit from all this mess. I'll set that as a target. Aspirational sort of thing. And let's head towards Duna. There it is. There's Jewel even, and there's Ike. This is an object enhancement. We should do some science right now. Log temperature. Um, we should be good to transmit. Oh, all right. We'll do one goo here and one low over Duna and just stick to that. We are going to recover this. Look at Ike trolling us right there. Kerbin is there, so we can just visually see whether we're going to be blocked or not. Okay, separation. And spark engine. We've captured. Oh, I have brought it down too far. I was looking at Ike's orbit instead of our target orbit. Prograde, please. Oh, we have more Delta V than I thought because we've got the backward thrusters on the probe, I see. And I was counting that wrong. We've got lots of Delta V. We'll get some Ike signs somehow. Uh, not like that. <laughs> That's the opposite of how I want to get Ike signs. Okay, no, let's not do it that way. But we are now close to Duna. Let's do the other goo. Yep, in space near Duna. And let's do the radiation. Transmit that. And thermometer. Transmit. Southeastern mountain range. South Pole, but not close to the South Pole, I bet. Nope, still high over Ike. Yeah, we're probably not going to get close enough, but if we did get close enough, we'd be flung out of the Duna system. Unless we made orbit around Ike, of course. So for now, we'll accept just the high over Ike science. Let me see, I'm going to make... A maneuver node right about there and since we do have an overabundance of of fuel I'm gonna just try and do as much as possible right away okay well we have a correction maneuver with 139 meters per second which will get us close to the target orbit but not quite on the periapsis so We'll have to do a little bit more work, but not a whole lot. Now, if I recall correctly, to get back, uh, we want we want Kerbin 54, or is it? No, I'll have to look it up. Something 54 be degrees behind something else, but I don't remember which way which. Or am I remembering the transfer window for Eve? Yep, fulfilled the contract already. And now we have to figure out how to get back home. Oh, I nearly forgot about uh, MacJeb's maneuver planner. Um, advanced transfer to another planet. Well, we have to target Kerbin first. Set as target. Well, that, that's where we want to go back. Let's get the lowest delta V. You know, we could do a burn like right now. It's saying 1,500 can handle it. But by the time we get back, we might be going pretty fast. Let's say ASAP, create node. I mean, you can see we actually go in, graze the orbit of Eve, and then hit Kerbin. 
so we'll be going pretty fast when we hit Kerbin. On the other hand, we have all of our Oblater. So... I'm tempted. I'm tempted to go with the faster... faster approach. And then, you know, we could use some fuel to slow down when we get there. You know what? Fine. ASAP me. Let's get there quickly. All right. Node in five days. That's because of our wide orbit right now. I mean, we didn't pack all this Delta V for nothing. So again, the total Delta V is reading negative because we've got backwards thrusters with the ant engines. That's looking pretty good. Better than I expected. Yeah, okay. We'll try that for now. We'll obviously need to dip a little bit further into the atmosphere to capture. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. Graze the orbit of Eve and then hit Kerbin. You know, uh, some uh, quick Mars missions use this sort of technique. Basically doing the same thing. And... In, the, in doing so, they hasten and shorten the length of uh, Mars mission. The downside is that you get more radiation if you're carrying people. But we don't have people, so or Kerbals. Kerbals are people too. So, yeah, no problem here. Parachute malfunctioned on Duna Pro 1. We can still repair it. I sure hope so. We only have one parachute. Please repair it. Do I have to tell them to repair it? Still says malfunction. Ah, uh, okay. Then this is the first thing that we really need to have fixed here. Now you've got my attention, Kerbalism. Right? I know there are malfunctions now. How, how do I get you guys to re repair it? Well, I don't actually know. I'm gonna say 29 kilometers should be good enough. If we have to go around twice, that's not gonna be a problem. As long as we capture initially. Okay, so first I would like to use up the Delta V that we have in this stage to slow down a bit because we're going mighty fast okay and I would like to go normal to get rid of that Whoop, I don't need to actually use the thrusters otherwise we're gonna knock into that again okay Mm, we can't really use the thrusters like this. Uh, do I dare turn around quickly? Okay, we need to pull in the antennae. We're going to be basically over the desert launch site. So hopefully that will give us communication. Okay, that's all we can do there. Gonna be carrying all this fuel down with the parachute. Um, I don't see a way to arm the parachute ahead of time. And it's probably busted anyway. We're in plasma blackout. We still didn't use much of Blader, to be honest. Still under 50 of Blader. Now, are we going to get communication back? Yes, we do. Uh, but the parachute malfunction. I don't know what to do about that. Our thrusters are sort of on the wrong side in this situation. 
feel like if I jettison the heat shield, it's gonna come crashing into us. Well, I'm gonna try and press space bar to deploy the parachute anyway. I'm going pretty slowly. Well, it's got the armed thing going, but that isn't right. Fix the dang parachute! Dude, we can still repair it. And it's just a warning, it's not even a danger. This is the busted solar panel, apparently. Maybe we have to get a repair person, like an engineer, to actually do the repair. I guess that's what they mean by we can still repair it. Well, yeah, seems that way. We're going to have to try and bring something back from a flyby of Duna on a subsequent mission. But you know what? Maybe we should send a Kerbal. I don't know. That's That seems like a tough one because you're going to have to have a lot of supplies. There's bound to be some problem I haven't foreseen. Maybe we should rescue another Kerbal so that we can have that be our test subject. I'll think about that. But yeah, uh, we got one Duna contract done, but we lost some science and failed on the other one temporarily. And we did take quite a while, so that's sad. I guess we'll definitely remember to pack backup parachutes from now on. Oh, I think it's just really dark at the KSC. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.